From Hollywood, the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tedley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> This coming Tuesday, most of you will be going to the polls to vote for your favorite political figures. And as we look in the Harris home, we find Alice and her brother William discussing the chances of the various candidates. It's going to be an interesting race for the governor of California, Alice. Who, who do you think will win, Warren or Roosevelt? Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. I wouldn't even venture an opinion without first discussing it with Phil. <laughs> he knows so much more. He knows so much more about politics. Uh, Oh, come now, sis. <laughs> How loyal can you be, the old foghead? <laughs> well, he knows absolutely nothing about politics. In the last four presidential elections, he voted for Jefferson Davis. <laughs> oh, well, he gets confused once in a while. But usually he knows what he's doing. And I'll prove it. Phil! Oh, Phil, will you come here a minute, please? Okay, honey. Yeah, what do you want? I want your opinion on something. Fire when ready, Gridley. <laughs> the brain is at your service. Phil, Warren is running this Tuesday. What do you think of his chances of winning? Well, that depends. What's the distance and how much weight does he carry? <laughs> Can he go in the mud? <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. How much would you charge to divorce my poor sister? <laughs> Phil, honey, we're talking about politics. Oh, politics, huh? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Happens to be my business. <laughs> Philip, this Tuesday we're having a gubernatorial election. What's wrong with the goober we got now? <laughs> Phil, we're talking about the governor. Oh, the governor. Well, then, why didn't you say so? What about him? We're having state elections for governor. We're also having a very important election right here in town. Encino is voting for a new mayor. By George, that is important. <laughs> Sorry, honey, but I'm not voting Tuesday. Frankie says it ain't important. Oh, that's the trouble with Frankie. Nothing's important to him except Frankie. Honey, how can you say that about Francis Waldo? <laughs> He's a very considerate guy. Look, do you remember when he was over to the house for dinner Wednesday night? He was over Tuesday night. No, no, it was Wednesday. I'm sure it was Tuesday. How can you be so sure? Because when I went to polish the silverware Wednesday morning, it wasn't there. <laughs> now, just a minute. Frankie wouldn't heist nothing from his best friend's wife. He thinks a lot of you. In fact, when you said that you were unhappy with your chinaware, he told me that he was going to buy you a new set for Christmas. Oh, isn't that sweet of... Wait a minute. Where is he going to get the money? I don't know. Where is he going to get the money? I don't know. Said something about he'd find some way to raise it, and I'd... Look, if you'll excuse me, honey, I gotta go down to band rehearsal. I'm going with you. I wanna talk to the boys in the band and get them to vote, too. But, honey, them guys can't vote. Why not? They're old enough. <laughs> I know that, but they haven't been able to pass the legitimacy test. <laughs> well, come on, I'm going down to rehearsal with you and give them a little pep talk. All huh? right. <laughs> All right, fellas, you can quiet it down now. All right, let's break it up, will you? I got a lot of work to do. All right, quiet, quiet. That's it. Now, let's keep it that way, huh? Now, gentlemen, if you're ready to rehearse, we'll start on uh, this. Remley, what do you think you're doing? 
I'm tuning up my guitar. <laughs> Don't you think you ought to take it out of the case first? <laughs> oh. I thought it sounded kind of flat. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it out later Look, Remley, not later, not later We're ready to rehearse Take the guitar out now Uh, maestro I got a confession to make I don't have my guitar in my case <laughs> Well, what have you got in there? My laundry <laughs> Well, take that out and strum it <laughs> It's gotta sound better than your guitar <laughs> I'd rather not Look, Remley, I said take it out Now open that case and dump your laundry out on the floor Okay. <laughs> Loud shirts. <laughs> I would say it's time you had that stuff laundered. Frankie, what did you have in that... Frankie, that's my silverware. Uh, can you prove it? Of course I can. If you look at it, you'll notice it has my monogram on it. Go on, read it. What does it say? U.S. Navy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I remember. That's the set I bought you when I was in the Coast Guard, dear. That's oh, all. Oh, now, never mind that. Some of my good sterling silverware is in there, too. Frankie, how could you? I did it for Alice. You said she wanted China wear for Christmas. What's that got to do with taking my silverware? Well, I had to hock something to get the money to pay for the China. <laughs> that figures, Alice. Frankie, you return my silverware. Yeah, don't forget my artichoke knives. <laughs> All right, now, let that matter drop. All right, fellas, let's get on with the rehearsal, Oh, before huh? you start, Phil, I want to talk to the boys about the election. <clears throat> Gentlemen, this week, an important event will take place. Do you know what it is? Yeah, you're opening at the Main Street Burlesque, boo-boo. <laughs> I am not. I'm talking about the election. Surely election day must mean something to you fellas. Sure it does. What does it mean? The bars are closed till seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> the bars are closed, so it'll give you fellas a chance to go out to the polls and vote. Vote? They don't even get out of bed on that day. <laughs> Now look, fellas, it's your duty to vote. Every good citizen should get out and vote Tuesday. You want good government, don't you? We got good government. Why vote and change it? The man we got in there now is doing a good job, and I say as long as he's doing a good job, let's keep Coolidge there. <laughs> Frankie, we're voting for a governor, not a president. They ain't nobody wants to get Coolidge out. <laughs> I like Calvert as much as you do. <laughs> now look, fellas, all I want you to do is go out and vote Tuesday. Will you do it? No! Alice, look, you don't ask these guys, you tell them. Now look, gentlemen, I never thought the day had come that I'd have to use this on you, but, um... Are you going to vote, or do I tell the immigration authorities where you are? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's got us, fellas. We'll have to vote. Thank you. Well, now that that's settled, I'd like to rehearse my song. Okay, start singing. Start playing. You start first this week. We started first last week. <laughs> Maybe you better start first, honey. That's the only way it ever comes out even. <laughs> Why is it I spend the day Wake up and end the day Thinking of you Oh, why does it do this to me Is it such bliss to be Thinking of you And when I fall asleep at night it seems You just tiptoe into all my dreams So I think of 
love no other one Ever since I've begun thinking of you Now remember, boys, on Tuesday, when you vote for the mayor of Vencino, there are two candidates running, Johnson and Conley. I happen to be campaigning for Conley, so if you'll vote that way, I'll appreciate it. Just a minute, Alice. What makes you think you could tell us how to vote? I sign your paychecks every week. <laughs> you can't intimidate me with that. I'll vote for whoever I please. And how do you spell Conley? <laughs> I'm not telling you how to vote. I'm just asking you to vote for Conley. And if you do, you won't regret it. She'll make a wonderful mayor. And if Alice says that she'll make a... Tilt! <laughs> Did you say she? Yes. Myrtle Conley. Oh, oh. She's a fine woman. Her character is beyond reproach. She doesn't drink, smoke, gamble, or go out with men. Ooh, I can't wait to meet her. <laughs> Neither can I. Come on, Remley, we'll get a couple of shovels and dig her up. Now, don't be sarcastic. Myrtle is a very brilliant woman. What the world needs is more women in politics. Look at the shambles you men have made of this world, Phil. It's all your fault. Well, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to do it. It's just that I got up early this morning and didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> Now look, Alice, we ain't voting for no square like that She's not a square Miss Connolly will make a wonderful mayor She has some very sound planks in her platform <laughs> Well, there's nothing like having a well-built mayor you know? <laughs> Well, we'll get down and look her over And if she passes her termite inspection, we'll vote for her Never mind She'll win without your vote she has all the women in town behind her. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a little more campaigning to do. I'll see you tonight, Phil. Okay, honey, okay. Conley. Hmm. Let her pay off. Wonder what this Conley dame looks like. Hey, Maestro, here's a picture of her in this morning's paper. Oh, bring it over here. Let me see that, Artie. <laughs> hey. Hey, look at this, Remley. Hmm? Yeah, he's right. Here's a picture of Miss Conley standing in front of the city hall. Which one's the city hall? <laughs> the one with the large box. No, that's got a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Must be Miss Conley. Hmm. Imposing looking structure, ain't she? <laughs> uh oh, Remley. Hmm? <laughs> Hey, get a load of this speech she made. She says, and I say verboten. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm elected, I promise to close every pool room, gambling joint, bookmaking establishment, and burlesque house in town. What's she trying to do, make us musicians homeless? <laughs> I got news for you. This dame has got to go. We got to stop her from getting elected. But how? Alice said she'll get most of the votes. There are other ways to stop her. The baby's against everything. Why? Because well, she's frustrated. That's why. What do you mean? Look, Remley, what is the most important thing in the world to a woman? A man. Right. 
Now, all we have to do is to get some guy to make love to her. Promise her a home, plenty of romance, and she'll drop politics like a hot potato. Yeah. But where are we going to find somebody stupid enough to make love to her? All we got to do is to find some eligible bachelor, and then we got to... We... <laughs> Lover boy Rumley. <laughs> Wait a minute, Curly. Bend over while I strap your knee pads on. You've got some proposing to do, lad. <laughs> now, let's get over. We want to take a look at your lady love. Oh, no, you don't. I ain't making love to no dame that looks like City Hall. Now, will you come on? She may not be so bad, Remley. Maybe she looks like City Hall on the outside. But beauty's only skin deep. She may be a lovely person on the inside. Well, I ain't gonna peel her to find out. <laughs> you have to do a little peeling sometimes. That's the only way you can find out what's on the inside. Now, take the thing, for instance. What's the thing? I'm glad you asked that, son. <laughs> I just happen to have my latest Victor recording under my arm. I'll spin it for you. Cause you'll never get rid of the... No matter what you do. No, you'll never get rid of the... No matter what you do. Hey, Curly. Yeah. What the heck was in that box? <laughs> the thing. <laughs> what thing? Look, we're busy. Tune in next week and find out. <laughs> you know we've got a lot of work to do. Right now, we've got more important things to do. Now, look, here's Miss Connolly's house. Now, remember, like I told you, all you got to do is make love to that dame. Tell her you're going to marry her, that, that you, well, that you don't want a wife in politics. All right, all right. I'll ring the bell. Now, look, and another thing. Hmm? Don't tell this Connolly dame who we are. I don't want Alice to know that we were here. How do you do? Whom do you wish to see? Uh, we'd like to see Miss Connolly. I'm Miss Connolly. Oh, no. <laughs> there goes my ulcer. Ram. <laughs> I beg your pardon? He said you remind him of someone in Tulsa. <laughs> That's Remley's hometown, Tulsa. I see. You see, Miss Connolly, uh, my friend here is a great admirer of yours, and, uh, well, he just had to come over to see you. Oh, isn't that sweet? Uh, won't you gentlemen come in? Thank you. Uh, what can I do for you? You can open the door again so I can get out. <laughs> I don't understand. Wait a minute, Frankie. Now look, tell Miss Conley what you're here for. Okay. Uh, madam, I saw your picture in the paper and it had a startling effect on me. It seemed to... Well, it made me... I don't know how to say this. So I won't. Good day. Thank you. Good day. Now, gentlemen, if you have something to say, I wish you'd say it. I'm a very busy woman. Politics takes a lot of time, you know. Well, that's why I'm here. I hope you don't think me bold, Merton, but there's something I want to tell you. You see, Merton... My name is Myrtle. <laughs> I'm a woman. You just keep reminding me. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of women in my time, but you're different. You're so... Uh, uh, Oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Pretty? No. Beautiful? You're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> You're more than just pretty or beautiful. You have a regal splendor about you. Oh, please go on. Well, I can't restrain myself any longer. I must get to the point. Miss Connolly, how would you like to change your name? I'd love to. Try Schultz. That's a very nice name. <laughs> oh, this is so sudden, Mr. Schultz. 
<laughs> I'll be a little time to think it over. Well, take as long as you want. 10, 20, 30 years. <laughs> Get back on the beam, Schultz. Now look, how can you resist this charming creature? Look at her angelic face. <laughs> and her figure. It's... It's... It's so... So svelte. <laughs> it ain't svelte, it's swollen. <laughs> Now, please don't get excited uh, now, Mrs. Conley. Uh, calm yourself now, uh, frankly. Hmm? How in the world can you say that about Myrtle's built? <laughs> <laughs> she has a lovely built. Now, take another look at her. Go ahead, walk her around her and take it all in. My feet hurt. <laughs> I'll wait for the next bus. Wait. <laughs> now, that's as much as I'm going to take from you, young man. Get out of my house. Get out. Get out. Now, wait out. a minute. Don't lose your temper, Myrt. Look, Myrtle, will you excuse me for just a moment? Frank. What? Frank. What are you trying to do? You're lossing everything up. Now, go back and make love to her. I can't do it. Then really? I'm going to do it for you. You can't do it. I'll plead your case, and in five minutes, I'll have that dame swoon in. You think you can do it? Are you kidding? This is my racket. <laughs> <laughs> wait outside and leave me alone with City Hall right over. What are you two whispering about? Oh, uh, Mrs. Connolly, I, I know that you will pardon us, but you see, my friend, Mr. Schultz, wants me to speak to you on his behalf. About what? About love. <laughs> love <laughs> That deep, tender, soul-searing, passionate love that I You better sit down, Murder. I don't think you can take this standing up <laughs> Well, what are you trying to say? Just this, Myrtle My friend has fallen madly in love with you And wants to marry you Oh, that's ridiculous I don't even know him with Frankie, it's better that way. <laughs> Look, Myrtle, a girl, a girl with your charm shouldn't waste her time in politics. I shouldn't? Of course not. When a woman reaches your age, she should be in a home. What's that? I mean, a home of your own. <laughs> you know, with children and stuff like that, you have everything that a man desires in a woman. Loveliness, tenderness, sweetness. Why, I envy Frankie. Ah, uh, if I could but have you for my own. Oh, I think that could be arranged, Curly. <laughs> I talk too much. Now look, Mert, about Frank. Oh, let's forget him. You're much more charming. You have a lot more appeal for a woman. True. <laughs> you know, if I do get married, it will have to be a man like you. You shut your dimple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I couldn't think of a woman I'd rather marry, but, well, you see, we're not really mated for each other. There's, uh, well, uh, there's a big difference in our ages. I know, but I prefer an older man. <laughs> yeah, let's get back to Schultz. Now, look, uh, Myrtle, if he wasn't so bashful, do you know what he'd do? Honey, yes. he'd move up close to you. Just like this. And then he'd put his arms around you, just like this. And then he'd look up into your lovely eyes and say... Well, ain't this a repulsive sight? <laughs> <laughs> Julius, what are you doing here? I'm delivering the groceries. What are you peddling, Mac? <laughs> I'm not peddling nothing. I, 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 I was just teaching Miss Connolly the tango. Well, go ahead. You two make a very pretty picture. We do? Yeah, you look like Sabu leading his elephant to a water hole. <laughs> you two wasn't dancing when I come in. What were you up to? We have nothing to hide. He was making love to me. He was making love to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, this guy must have switched the kerosene. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got no right to make love to another woman. He has two if he wants to. Uh, another woman? Curly, you're not married, are you? Oh, Mert, how could you think such a thing? If you don't believe me, just ask Julius. 
I ain't married, am I, Julia? No, he's not married. And if you don't believe me, ask his wife and two kids. <laughs> you have a wife and two children? Well, well, in a way, yes. The, you see, the children are from my wife's former marriage. And your wife? She's adopted. <laughs> adopted? Yes, but it makes no difference. I treat her just as if she was one of my very own, you see. Now, let's get back to Frankie. As I was saying, Myrtle, if he were here right now, he'd put his arm around you just like this. And then he'd look up into those big blue eyes of yours, and then he'd say... Why, you no good nine-toed Indian. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Connolly, what are you doing in my husband's arms? Curly, is this true? Explain yourself. Well, the Indian blood I got from my father. <laughs> He's part Cherokee. And as for the nine toes, that happened in a hunting accident up in Coleslaw, Alaska. We were just leaving the <laughs> and as we... I didn't mean that. Is Mrs. Harris your wife? You bet your big fat girdle I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Harris. I didn't know that. You're nothing I... but a... But a husband stealer. Yeah, you Ooh. chubby cradle snatcher. <laughs> Taking advantage of my youthful innocence. Why, Alice, do you know what you she was doing? You stay out of this, Wanger, or you'll be an eight-toed Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> Come on home. You've got a lot of explaining to do. All right. Eight toes? <laughs> then you'll have to give me two strokes when we're playing footsies. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Alice, will you believe me? It wasn't my fault. I'm perfectly innocent. Then how did you get in that house? <clears throat> well, it was like this. I was on my way to the sweet shop for my afternoon parfait. And suddenly, a big monstrous hulk reached out and dragged me in. I thought she was trying to sell me a suit. So instead, she grabbed me in her arms and smothered me with kisses. I tried to fight her off, but it was useless. She outweighed me by two stone. Then just as I started to black out, you arrived and saved me from a fate that's worse than that. Joel McRae stars next in Tales of the Texas Rangers on NBC.